Welcome in to K-State Online. I am Mason Both, and uh, it's a quick turnaround for the Wildcats after a really tough loss for them on Saturday against TCU. 75-72, to they lost it to the Horned Frogs. It was a last-second shot by Jameer Nelson Jr., who was a 25% three-point shooter on the season going into that moment. But he hit the one that counted against K-State and really just made a lot of sense considering the fact that K-State couldn't buy a three all day. They only made one. They shot 7%. and it's one of the spots to lead off in going into this game with Texas. This team is now under 31% from the season from three. 30.4% uh, is the exact number if you, you're wanting to get technical on it. So you can't even round up to 31 unless you're, you know, using weird rounding skills that uh, my base level math knowledge will not get to. So this team can't score it from deep, which I don't know if anybody here has watched basketball over the last decade. Um, it's kind of the most important shot in the sport now, and for good reason. It's worth more than every other shot on the floor, and it helps you with your spacing when you need that. And K-State, uh, they have some guys that if you get good spacing, there is something that can be there. But really what you end up running into is teams, they don't have to defend it as hard. Case you underscore fans said it the best. Like K-State has three legitimate guys that you have to worry about beyond the three-point line, Kaluma, Carter, and Perry. And that means there are two other guys you don't have to worry about being out there. And it doesn't matter what the personnel looks like. Those other two guys, it could be David Gasson and Will McNair, or it could be Day-Day Ames out there with you know, I, I, Dorian Finister, or whoever else you want to throw on this roster. It doesn't matter if it's just a traditional big that you don't want out there. You don't have to worry about K-State from there. It makes it really tough to score that way. And Texas is not going to be an easy opponent for K-State from that, that side of things. Texas is top 60 in Ken Palm in both their offense and defensive efficiency. Their offense, their top 25, they're just inside the top 60 defensively. Uh, there was another good graph that, that Fan put out the other day, basically showing that the best defensive teams in the Big 12 if they are combined with solid offense, they are towards the top. They are doing well. But if you have some teams that defensively are really good, K-State being one of those, but the offense is nowhere near that, they are lagging behind. That's going to make it tough for K-State against Texas. Another thing in this game to, that's going to be really interesting to watch is Max Aismas because he has been the savior for Texas this season. He's hit game-winning shots for him. Uh, in, in games that they very easily could have and should have lost that would drastically change Texas's season because there was a time not too long ago where they were trending towards maybe being a bubble team like K-State, and this game was going to carry a lot of weight. I think it still does for both teams. But Ace Smith has been their hero. The transfer from Oral Roberts, 17 points a game. He's shooting it well. He is the go-to guy for them. And it's funny when you think about the juxtaposition for K-State because – Aismas was down to Texas or K-State, and uh, maybe if you get Max Aismas, you don't get Tyler Perry, so that doesn't really change a ton for K-State. Aismas is a better player than Tyler Perry. There's no doubt about that. But if you don't have anything else, this entire roster is the same for K-State, and Max Aismas is here, maybe you're a couple wins better, but like nobody's sitting around feeling a ton better about K-State's NCAA tournament chances. That's That just goes to show how much the other stuff that has gone on with this roster has created a, a, a problem for this season for K-State. But he's going to be a handful for K-State to try and figure out, and we'll see where, where things go from there for him. Another thing that is beneficial for K-State in this matchup, if you're trying to look for some positives and trying to keep optimism despite the fact that K-State has lost six of their last seven, Texas has been bad at home in Big 12 play. They're 2-4, and four, and some of the losses really do not make a lot of sense. They lost to UCF at home earlier this year. Uh, they've had leads in games at home. It has not mattered. They have found ways to lose home games that, that frankly, they shouldn't. They also have a road loss at West Virginia. Now, again, that's a road game, but still, uh, how they lost to West Virginia, it, it will blow your mind. So this is not a team that is immune to being beaten on their home floor. And K-State desperately needs this win. It's going to be interesting to see if they're able to go out and find it and get the job done. But we'll see ultimately how things end up going down from there. I think going into this game for K-State, we, we heard Jerome Tang talk about it after uh, the, the game on Saturday that, hey, this team isn't going to panic. And I told Drew, man, I, I think you need a little bit of panic. 
Maybe it doesn't have to be manifest as panic. So, you know, you don't have to be, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, what, what are we going to do? We got to scramble all that. But there does need to be a healthy sense of urgency. And, you know, every once in a while, you need a kick, you need a kick in the butt to get yourself going. And if this team right now doesn't have that, that's not a good sign because there were warning signs when you lost two, three games in a row and it didn't change anything for this team. So the fact that now we're at this point in the season and your NCAA tournament hopes are getting close to being next to nothing as you sit at 15 and 10 with six Big 12 games left in the regular season and then, you know, at least one in Kansas City you've got to get something figured out here. I think this team needs to find that healthy level of panic and urgency and play like it. And if that doesn't happen, then I don't know. I don't know that K-State is going to be able to, to be very successful with uh, how you view things moving forward, because the opportunity is there to beat Texas. We'll see how things end up going down in this game. I just, I, I struggle to find the area where I think K-State is going to have an edge here uh, obviously, you know, you see the, the Ken Palm score down there. They, they think Texas is going to win this game by eight points. Um, the, the one thing that you can maybe hang your hat on is again, you're going into a game where you're probably going to have the size advantage if you're K, if you're K state. So maybe you can use that crash the boards hard. I think that should be something that they really try and focus on. Like Use that to your advantage here and use it as a challenge if you're Jerome Tang and this coaching staff. Your team just got waxed on the glass by TCU. Uh, all those offensive rebounds they had led to 20-second chance points, and that was the difference in the game. They they beat K-State 20-8 to on second chance points. It's been an issue all season for K-State. You have to be able to go out and get that done. That's where you can find an edge if you're K-State. Other teams have used that as an edge against the Wildcats this season. And they already had the benefit of the fact that K-State's not a very good shooting team and that K-State does a lot of other things that are very questionable for a solid basketball team. Find a way to use some of these things that have been a disadvantage to you to an advantage. Get Make minor adjustments and see if you can shave or add, you know, good or bad, however, you, whichever category it is, and you need it to be positive. See if you can make a slight adjustment like, the turnover thing. There was actually progress there for K-State on Saturday. They only turned it over 14 times against TCU. They turned TCU over 14 times, and they limited TCU's fast break points, which is something that TCU is really good at. Them and Iowa State are fantastic about getting out in transition after forcing you to give them the ball. Find a way to keep turnovers down, and it will keep you in games better for K-State because, look, outside of the – the, the two games against Oklahoma and Houston case. It's not like K-State's been getting their butt kicked in these stretches. The, the game against Iowa state, we know it was close. The game against Oklahoma state was obviously close. And then BYU and TCU, you had chances in the last minute to tie the game. And so it's there. You just got to find the, the margins that you can make things better for K-State. And, you know, they, I think they were better against, against TCU as well. They only turned it over. Uh, 16 times in that game and you think man that that is high that seems like a really uh a really low bar to set yeah I, it is but k-state turns the ball over 22 percent of the time or close to it 21.4 uh so back to my rounding rule i guess i can't say 22 uh, it's 21 but their total is 15 a game now if you adjusted that for big 12 only it would for sure be higher so k-state's got to find the little things and then hope that you get a performance from your top three guys where they're able to pour it in and you can win games that way. K-State, they beat KU because they got 58 points from their top three guys. They were all efficient. They all did good things. They made shots like you needed them to, and that's how you're going to win. You just have three guys that they have to be really special to get that done because of the attention that's going to be put on them. It's going to make it really hard. In terms of what I think happens tonight for K-State and Texas, I actually think that K-State wins the game, and there's really no sound logic behind it. But this team, while I don't think they are a very good team, they are not so bad that they should lose seven of eight games uh, in, in a stretch this season. And they've been so close. K-State's won the last two games they've played in Austin, uh, including you know the, the last Bruce Weber team. They're like, how do they do that? Uh, so I just think this is one of those that it's a they're kind of due for something. 
They've played well in Austin in the past. Texas has struggled at home at various points this season. And this just feels like you, you give it to K-State because they're going to take over for the wild Big 12 in this game. So I think that's the way I lean. Ultimately, the prediction doesn't matter, but I, w- I will not be surprised if K-State gets it done. And look, winning this game for K-State, while it seems unlikely and it may be tough to do, this win does put them back into a position to start to think, okay, now we have the momentum. Let's go get another big win on Saturday at home against BYU. Then it's a short turnaround, but another home game on Monday night against West Virginia. K State wins this one. You can start to you can start to consider that again, but they have to at least win another game before we start trying to put them into the NCAA tournament picture again. Because at this point, really, you're just hoping that Cincinnati plays well enough and you get an NIT bid. Like that's the position that K State is in right now. So they have to take this truly one game at a time. And I I don't know that the four wins to get to 99 in Big 12 play that Jerome Tang has talked about is going to make a difference, but K-State is going to have to try and do something. So try and get the win in Austin. It, it can happen, but you're going to have to hope for some things to fall your way and to get those three guys back into their working order because Tyler Perry was good on Saturday. Arthur Kaluma and Cam Carter were not very good, and especially when they're not hitting shots, that's just that's a dire spot to be in for this K-State team. So uh, I, I think K-State does kind of pull off the shocker and they keep everybody with one eye watching this team the rest of the way. Uh, I think they go to Austin and I think that they win the game. 75 to 68 will be my take uh, in this one for K-State against Texas. So we'll see how things uh, go on from that point moving forward. That will do it for uh, this edition of K-State Online. I will be back tomorrow with plenty of stuff. We'll talk football with Drew Galloway. Uh, Also, plenty of post-game reaction from K-State and Texas on the way uh, Monday night and Tuesday morning as well. So lots of stuff with K-State Online. Make sure you're paying attention to it all. And uh, that will do it for me. I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching.